Here's a tutorial for an ocean sunset pour painting. So I'm going to start with my colors and real quick, my ratio for my pouring medium to paint is four parts flow trawl to one part student level paint. But for more in-depth info and visuals on my pour paint ratios and consistency, check out my video on that in the description. Consistency is super important for the swipe portion, so make sure to check that out in the video. Okay, so you of course could buy all of the colors you want for your sunset, but I wanted to try to get by with as few tubes of paint as possible possible. So I'm just going to be mixing some of these colors to make my own custom transition colors. Okay, so for my sunset portion, I have five colors total. So my cadmium yellow here, this one is just straight out of the tube. And then for my orange, it's actually 70% cadmium yellow and 30% deep magenta. And here's my deep magenta. And again, this one's just straight out of the tube. And this purple is actually 85% deep magenta with 15% phthalo blue. Thalo blue is super potent, so it, a little goes a long way. And then finally, I have just straight thalo blue, straight out of the tube. Okay, for my ocean colors, I have three here. And my darkest color is thalo signing green. And I definitely had to Google how to say that word. Um, so that's my darkest, and it's straight out of the tube. And then my medium teal color is 65% thalo signing green and 35% ocean green. And my lightest color here is ocean green and that's just straight out of the tube. Then for my sand colors I use 70% gold and 30% white for the lighter color and 50% gold, 30% warm gray, and 20% white for the slightly darker sand color. It's a very little difference between them but it makes gorgeous subtle little cells and lacing on the sand. And I'll list these custom color percentages in the description if you want to check those out. And titanium white is my swipe color that I'll be using for the foam of the waves. Okay, so amounts of paint. I'm using an 11 inch by 14 inch canvas and a good target to shoot for is two and a half ounces for each color. That should give you enough to be on the safe side. So that's two ounces of flow trawl to half an ounce of paint. And then of course any water amount you might need for consistency. I'm using Artist Loft 100% silicon and I'm only applying it in the ocean and sand colors. And I'm only using two drops in each color and only stirring it two to three times very gently. Okay, so I have an 11 by 14 inch canvas here. And if you want to know how I prep my canvases, I'll link that video in the description. And so I'm going to mark the canvas halfway down so that half of it is the sunset and the other half is the ocean and beach portion. This will also give me a straight line to pour across and to kind of always gauge that I have a straight horizon line. I'm going to start with my yellow and then I'm going to transition to orange, then magenta, then purple, then deep blue. Now, phthalo blue will be super dark when it's dry, so if you don't want it too dark, maybe pick a different blue color. I'm just going to use the scraper real quick here to get a good start on the blending process. This is all up to you about how you transition your sunset. I like a bit of a halo of yellow around the sun um, to give that glowing effect to it. And the general theory is when shaping your sunset, as far as perspective goes, basically clouds by the sunset on the horizon line are way off in the distance and the sky opens up as it gets closer to you, the viewer. So in flat 2D terms, the lines of color are closer together, thin strips at the horizon line, and then spread out farther as you go up literally on the canvas. And I create the lines of color by using a stiffer piece of plastic. This is a cut off piece of a self laminate sheet. I will link those sheets in the description. And I'll either run it through the colors to blend them or dab new color onto the plastic and basically place it on top of the other colors. Then I streak it through by dragging it. To blend a larger area of color, I'll use the same little piece of plastic sheet, but flat side down. And basically it's a micro swipe and I smear the colors together in certain areas. Now I do a lot of this work because I don't want my sunset to look too banded like yellow, orange, magenta, you know, I want it to feather together and create that illusion of clouds down by the horizon line. And then, like I said, it just gets a little bit more open as you go up on the canvas and the sky kind of opens up. I decided that I'm going to add my sun in last. Now, a bit of my yellow from the horizon line crept down below my pencil line, so I'm just going to use my scraper to scrape that part off to get ready for my ocean layers. 
Then I'm going to pour a thin line of my dark teal close to the horizon, but not touching it because I'm going to push it up against the yellow with my scraper to gently have the two meet. To just pour it right up against the yellow would uh, run the risk of looking super wobbly and bleeding through with each other and I just don't have steady enough hands to really keep that straight line going. So I'm just going to push that paint up. Now you might get some dipping of the yellow or bleed through of the teal or both, but there are a couple ways to fix that. The most surefire way to fix it is to let the whole pour dry and then literally paint over the colors to clean up the horizon line. So that's always an option for later. So don't worry about it too much. So I'm just gonna add the rest of the dark teal down here so that there isn't too much paint to mess up that horizon line when I add my medium teal. So I'm going to take up about a quarter or a fifth portion of the canvas with this part of the ocean. I don't want to go too far down because I'll need to add the wave in the beach in. I learned a fun little trick with some nylon cord. I dipped it in the dark teal and scraped off the excess so there weren't any drips of paint. Then I propped up my hands to place a very straight line of color. It's important in this ocean part to apply subtle linear color because I'm going for a calm ocean and that far back near the horizon would be darker in very subtle wave textures. So to play around with the waves, you can add alternating dark teal, like either dribble it on or put it on the nylon cord and uh, apply it and then swipe it into the medium teal by dragging the nylon cord and you can kind of go at an angle or maybe zigzag it just play around with it and see if that's giving you the wave effect that you're going for you can also add more medium teal if it gets too dark and muddy and i just keep moving it around until i get the look that i'm going for all right, next is the wave portion. I'm going to shape it by pouring my light teal. I want one wave to be almost coming out at the viewer, so it's going to come down on the canvas a bit more. And the second wave will curve back and off the canvas. I'll add in more medium teal to fill in the feel. <laughs> to fill in the curve of the waves. Then I'll add in a few light teal strips onto the medium teal. And to add seamless transition, I'll add a bit more dark teal right here and then gently blend it in with the nylon cord. So I got a new nylon cord to blend this light teal with the medium teal. I am saying teal a lot, <laughs> um, but I love this cord. It is so useful. This is the first time I've used it. It's pretty stiff, so I can loop it around and use it as a tool and it's amazing so i'm just running it over the light teal and medium teal until i get a gentle blended look in some of the areas it creates micro lacing which is perfect for that watery effect now I'll pour on the two sand colors. To save on paint, I do thin alternating strips of each color, and then I take the scraper to gently blend them. This process gives a very nice subtle lacing effect on the beach instead of just, you know, one flat color. Now for the white, the foam of the waves. I just take my white, which is thinner than the other colors, it's my swiping color, and I pour thin strips until I get kind of the shape that I want. Then I use the same plastic laminate sheet strip to gently grab the white and swipe it over the tan. For a more in-depth tutorial on making foam lacing for waves, check out my ocean tutorial in the description. Basically, you're going to be using a very light hand when grabbing the top of the white and gently pulling it over the sand colors. I also do this to blend it into the light teal. Um, and I'll also do long swiping motions that follow the curve of the wave. And now I'll go back to my horizon line. I see it's dipped in the center a bit and you can easily fix this after it's dried. In fact, I recommend that, but I just wanted to try something out. Couldn't help my ex myself it's the experimenter in me so I took a rectangle piece of the plastic laminate sheet and I pressed it down carefully into the dark teal then kind of just pushed it slightly upward to bump the yellow part of the horizon line and it seemed to work pretty good now for the sun so it would definitely be less risky to add the sun after the pour is complete and again the experimenter in me just I just wanted to see what would happen so I just lightened up my cadmium yellow with some white and scoop some of it onto my stir stick then poured it into the middle of my horizon yellow and you can see the ridge that it's forming as that lighter yellow is pushing out the darker yellow um, but this is all mixed with Floetrol which is a leveler so it'll all level out it might push the horizon line down too but again that's easily fixed after it's all dried and you can just use the leftover dark teal that you have in in one of your cups now for the reflection 
I poured a little puddle of the lighter yellow so that I could easily dunk a little piece of the laminate sheet in, and it's about an inch, and then dunk it in and apply it to the teal under the horizon line. And for shaping the reflection, it's to mimic the sun, so a circle. So you're gonna want it longer on the left to right than on the top to bottom. And the lines won't be entirely straight or the same size because it's the sun reflecting the tops of the waves and the waves are irregular. So add in some dark teal if you need to break up too much of a glob of yellow and you just kind of like alternate the lines to get a very gentle reflection on the ocean. So there you have it. That's the ocean sunset pour. Please click the like button if this was helpful or interesting. Um, that helps me know what kind of content y'all like. So that'll help me with future videos. And check out my other ocean tutorials if you're interested. I will also put those informational tutorials like the how to mix the pour paint and how to prep your canvas in the description too. Thanks.